The wind was howling on the Monday Night Football game. You can hear it. That's that's live audio from from right now in Buffalo uh, or Mike. But we have waivers on today's show. We've got news to talk about. You've got fantasy playoffs about to begin. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. Enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by pristineauction.com, the best sports memorabilia site in existence. Check this out. Last night, these items were won for less than $100. A signed Justin Jefferson jersey, $85. Damian Harris, signed jersey, just $49. And a Javante Williams signed mini helmet for just $83. Go to pristineauction.com, use our registration code BALLERS when you sign up, and get a $10 credit for your first victory. We also want to thank Theragun for supporting the show. Don't let the stress of daily life weigh on your body, whether you're an elite athlete or someone like me just trying to make it through the day tension-free. Theragun can help. What is Theragun? It's a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. Ooh. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. The Generation 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension. And um, we can all speak to the power of the Theragun. I love my Theragun. And uh, when we choose to be elite athletes, you know, we definitely lean on Theragun to prep and recover. And uh, it makes a huge difference. So uh, they are trusted by 250 professional sports teams. Elite athletes like DK Metcalf, DeAndre Hopkins, Chase Claypool, and of course, hundreds of thousands of customers. Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. Go to therabody.com slash footballers right now to get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash footballers, therabody.com slash footballers. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. That was last night's game. I was going to say, that was a pretty good <laughs> it's, it's impression of the MVP of last night's game. I was actually really impressed by that, Mike. That but what do you, that wasn't me. <laughs> I mean, great audio recording of the game. <laughs> it was a bit windy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. A little bit wind. A little bit wind. Uh, we'll talk about that game. We've got waivers, news, and notes. Where there's smoke, there's fire on today's show. Quarterback streamers, you can find... All of our most recent articles on the web, thefantasyfootballers.com, Twitter at the FF Ballers. 14 to 10, final score, three pass attempts from Mac Jones for the winning side. <laughs> oh. I, in many ways, enjoyed the game because of the entertainment factor of like, you just don't see games like this where, you know, the, this was a battle of. The Patriots just decided we're going to run on every play and we're going to expect our, our linemen to block you better than, you know, you can get through the line and we'll just do it over and over again. They ran 32 consecutive plays between pass attempts. And so for that, in that regard, it was entertaining. I still don't really understand. I do think the Bills got outcoached. And, sure. And I think a lot of that has to do with what I saw on the offensive side of the ball where you have a quarterback who can run the football. That seems to going into the game. That seemed like an advantage. Yes. Uh, but I don't think schematically they used him enough in that regard. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And then you also had, I think potential for both teams to use the screen game more. They didn't do it. And you, you know, into rounds and some, some different short yardage plays you could have used, but at the end of the day, the Patriots ran it down their throats on did, the road. Did you see Sean McDermott's quote about the coaching? No. Yeah. Uh, quote, let's not give more credit than we need to give Bill Belichick for this one. <laughs> let's not? Yeah. Um, they threw the ball three times. Yeah. And you knew they were going to run every single play. And Damian Harris. That's a man who's really upset he got outcoached. Damian Harris carried the ball ten times. Rushed for 111 yards, 
And Ramondre Stevenson, 24 for 78. You knew exactly what was going to happen. I do agree with Andy that I actually enjoyed the game. Like, I don't like a 10-9 game generally because usually a 10-9 game means that the offense is just – sucked it was just bad football nobody could do anything in this game it was actually interesting to see the decisions the strategy the fact that like okay you're getting to the close you know close to the end of a quarter where you're gonna flip the field and you're gonna have the wind at your back um you know it was just it was really fascinating and um I I enjoyed it I thought it was a fun game but there's not a lot of fantasy to take away Certainly not in either well, of the passing games. I mean, the, the big news is that Damien Harris hurt his hamstring, uh, and he left in the first quarter or first half. He tried to come back in the second, ripped off a huge run again. Would have housed it. Uh, and a healthy Damien Harris takes it to the house for uh, for a second monster touchdown, but he ends up limping off the field, and that that will be the thing to watch. They is, will go straight into the bye. So I don't know well, yeah, that's, if that, it will linger, but yeah, yes. you're right. That is the thing to watch, and Ramondre ran it 24 times, didn't really break anything big, but got chunks of yardage, He got yards. enough. It, like, it felt like every time they needed for needed him to get four or five yards, they just they were able to do it. Yeah. Uh, the thing I was disappointed most with is that no one, act, no one tried to break the field goal record when they were going the uh, the direction of the wind cuz if you the first kickoff of this game the ball went like 10 rows deep in the stands and uh, i mean you got to give it a try because you probably could have made it from like 75 and just had a record that will never ever ever be broken i actually had the same thought but with regards to a i wanted Josh Allen to take the snap <laughs> with the wind at his back, right. and I wanted to see if he could throw it ninety yards. Yeah, I mean, like just he throw probably it, could throw have. it from the twenty into the end zone on he, the other side. Have sure. it in the air, eighty yards. Hail Mary, yeah. from your five yard line. I mean, I wanted to see it for sure, and uh, they had their chances. I mean, Buffalo had red zone attempts that they they didn't come through with, and yeah, they had a chance to win at the very end. Uh, the Buffalo running back situation turned back into to uh, the the pumpkin reappeared. Uh, Matt Burita fumbled very early on uh, in exchange of, of a handoff. Essentially got benched after that. Zach Moss, who was activated because they were going to need running back help, he actually ends up on the field a ton. So moving forward, it, like where it felt like Matt Burita could be this potential boost to your running back core, I think that's probably dead now. I had a chance to win at the end, too, against Al Borland. Yes. Yes, you did. And uh, with a because of a ridiculous set of events of Damien Harris having a monster game, and I lost by five. Yep. So he is not here today, obviously, as he's been fired. Oh, but no, he there he is. <laughs> he's the one that hit the button. We found him. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. Couple players we'll talk about on today's Where There's Smoke, There's Fire. We'll start with Falcons wide receiver Russell Gage with his back to back top twelve finishes. Really? Yeah. Wow. He okay. has been targeted on twenty one percent of his routes. Kyle Pitts is at twenty percent. Uh there's been f some passing volume in the offense. Matt Ryan, forty one pass attempts last week uh he did finish last year wide receiver 18 after the bye week so we've seen him have a sustained period of of success especially weeks 14 15 and 17 last year where he was a top 20 wide receiver i don't think this exists where the uh you know they have the desert the whole picture of you know the mirage the oasis, right the, the, the oasis yeah. you you look at it and you walk towards it and then it disappears on you sure that is my concern with this fire. I don't know if it's really fire. I don't know if I get too close. You're seeing the heat waves. I'm seeing the yeah, the distortion in the sky and, and the, the heat waves coming up. But getting too close means putting him in my lineup. Uh, uh, and so I guess for me, I it's just smoke. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm it, scared of the Falcons. 
it really is a question of what the line of fire means. Is he going to continue to, you know, do what he did the last two weeks back to back wide receiver one? Absolutely not. No, he's not talented enough. This offense isn't good enough. But is he someone that you could put in your starting lineup? I think so. I think that he is a worthy wide receiver three. He started the year injured. If you remember coming into this season, even with Ridley, Gage was one of those late round pickups that you mm -hmm. uh, I drafted in a lot of different places because he had opportunity. You saw it last year. He's not a world beater, but he's good enough. And now he's so necessary to the offense. That doesn't mean you're not going to get those goose games. Um, you know, since the bye week, he, he was injured early in the season. They had an early bye week in week six. And since that time, he's had two horrific games. Both of them were gooses. Mike, I believe you started him in both of those games. I did indeed. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, unfortunately for you, he's been pretty good <laughs> all the other games. Um, you know, Mike is King Goose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. King of King of the Geese, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do <laughs> think Thanks. that he is involved enough and talented enough to be a wide receiver three. I would not be scared of putting him in uh, my wide receiver three or my flex position because he's he's involved yeah the, the volume is is too strong that signal I think will carry over it is scary uh, they're going on the road against Carolina where he in fact had a, a goose against Carolina uh, back in week eight at home but it, it's since then you know eight target or seven or more targets in uh four of the past five games <clears throat> the volume is there and so, so I think in, in a half or a full point PPR, he's just he's a safe wide receiver three, like Jason's saying. And let's talk about the resurgence of Cowboys running back Tony Pollard the last four weeks. Running back 19, 23, 15, 17, 40 percent of snaps. Lots been made of a lot has been made of Ezekiel Elliott's knee and needing rest. And oh, it needs rest. OK, that's mm. with a K. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, he's got as many 15-plus yard runs as Kamara and Najee Harris and Madison combined. So big plays are the name of the game with Tony Pollard because 40% of the snaps is not going to get it done without them. So smoke or fire Washington a couple times coming up, the Giants and Arizona to finish the year. I'm going to surprisingly say smoke. Okay. Um, he's obviously been good, and he's not someone I don't think that, you know, you, you have to bench in all situations. He's a bum or anything like that. Um, but the reality is the last six games, he's been better for fantasy, and yet he's had less utilization than he had before the bye week. It's just been big plays and he's obviously got the talent to do that we saw that this last week against new orleans where he had the big touchdown run outside of that one play he wasn't that good so he needs big plays and i guess when i think about it and i look at this schedule washington and the giants were supposed to be you know good matchups that has totally changed those those defenses have started locking it down um arizona in the championship week i just don't think those are the defenses you're going to on the regular bet for big plays against. Um, so I, I, I'm going to say Smoke. This is a, a player that I would rather, um, you know, it, I guess you could put it this way, right? Like, let's say you've got a flex. Would you rather put, in, you know, in a half PPR or full PPR, would you rather put Tony Pollard or Russell Gage rest of season? I would put Tony Pollard. So I'll, I'll go like, ooh. Uh, because I, Smoke Fire to me is not, is Tony Pollard going to take over the world? It's can I flex him? Mm -hmm. because of what his finishes represent. I have hesitation about Zeke being healthy enough. I think the team obviously needs to get Pollard on the field. So I think I'd, I'd flex Tony Pollard over Russell Gage and I'd, and I'd, uh, I'd say fire here. I, f if you're talking PPR, I would probably just take this, the easy points from Russell Gage, but overall, I think you can flex Tony Pollard. The like Zeke is not good. What did we just get a quote in from, uh, so Troy Aikman was talking, and like even he's saying that Zeke just does not look right. Like the whole world can see that Zeke doesn't look like Ezekiel Elliott looked in those first uh, four or five weeks or so. So Pollard will continue to get in no matter what they're saying out there. And so I think that Pollard can be, I think he can be flexed. There's also the oper There is the chance that we hit a wall with Zeke. There and is Tony that Pollard too. wins you a championship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, 
All right, that was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Grilling season never ends with Traeger. Go to Traeger.com slash footballers. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Keenan Allen was placed on the reserve COVID-19 list. He will need two negative COVID tests 24 hours apart. The game is Sunday, 405 Eastern against the Giants. Yeah, we should know before Sunday, um, before Sunday morning. So the afternoon game shouldn't matter, but it, it's just we have we have to pay attention and see if he gets activated in time or not. I don't know because I haven't looked at all the names that we're going to be talking through today on the waiver show. Is Jalen Guyton on that list? Brooksy. He is now. He is now. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's somebody that you should, without question, if you if you need a desperation flex this week, and if sure. Keenan misses, Guyton had a good game last week. He was not just the, the big catch, but, um, had a, had a few others. Julio Jones is, uh, designated to return from injured reserve. Okie dokie. So what do we think? I mean, they need him bad. Um, they have the Jacksonville Jaguars this week. Uh, I think you want to watch him come back and play a healthy game before throwing him in your lineup, but he's certainly someone that should be rostered and I think can make an impact in these final fantasy weeks in the, in the playoffs. All right. Uh, Chase Edmonds eligible to return from injured reserve, but the status for chase very in question for Monday night football. You should plan to be without him unless you are the actual James Connor manager. Even then sure. you're going to play Connor over him. So Edmonds probably not in starting consideration this week. Not yet. But I guess if he practiced and felt good heading into the week, it'd be different. Yeah, I mean, you know, we have Coach Cliff Kingsbury has said the status will come down to Sunday, uh, and it's the Monday night football game. So it's, I mean, this is dangerous territory for fantasy. Elijah Mitchell mm. is in the league's concussion protocol. He reported concussion symptoms Monday morning. I think he came out of the game, was checked for them, was cleared, and then Correct. reported them Monday, which is not a great sign. No. no. So. He'll have to get through the protocol to start. Jeff Wilson, his surgically repaired knee flared up in week 13. Shanahan said he might be sidelined a couple of days. This is tough because if he was healthy, this would be an obvious next man up. And right now, I, Trey Sermon um, is is gone as well. So Jamichael Jemi Hasty could be the last man standing. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Yeah, that'll be an interesting discussion uh Debo Samuel groin injury hoping to play week 14 that's what Kyle Shanahan said as well <sighs> that's sketchy yeah yeah and they're fighting for a playoff berth that's, so that's why he's that's why Shanahan is hoping that Debo will play but a man with his injury history I will rushing say this. back from a groin injury he rushed back earlier this year and was fine for multiple weeks what was so, the what was the previous injury I don't remember if it was – it might have been a groin again. Okay. But I do remember that week where we were all hesitant, and then he played anyways, and then he, he was good. So, if you're talking about a month ago, that was the calf. Okay, it was calf. There you go. Yeah, it was. Oh, yes. Yeah, but he – That he, was one uh, where we yeah. were on the fence, and we said the same thing about his injury history, and he came back and played fine. So, I don't know. You're playing him if he's active, right? Absolutely. Darren Waller, day-to-day, -day, according to the Raiders head coach. So – yeah, your tight end position is day-to-day right now. Yeah, yep. the time on the island is over. You've been rescued. It wasn't a good time. No. Ron Rivera said an MRI test did not confirm a torn ACL for Logan Thomas, so he may not have as serious of an injury. That's great. That is awesome. Ricky Seals-Jones missed last week but was running routes pregame. And he got some practices in last week, I believe, limited. Uh, Deontay Harris had a uh, three-game suspension for a DUI upheld, so he's out. Okay. Corey Davis he's out. is out for the rest of the year. Core muscle surgery. Anything else? Is out. More? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Jamison Crowder, who's been and, getting a few yeah. PPR right. targets. Yeah, and Peggy. Um, any other <laughs> players you guys want to talk about? Matt Rule was really... Really enthusiastic when he said he anticipates Cam Newton will start. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the, the the it's worth discussing. I don't remember if we brought this up in the news earlier, but uh, Joe Brady 
has been let go in the bye week. So they have changed their offensive coordinator. Um, and I think that they are, are you know, they did not like um, the fact that uh, obviously Matt Rule did not like the way that the offense uh, was orchestrated last week. I mean, when you have Cam Newton and he rushes for five yards, you question, like, are you building this offense around its strengths or not? Um, hard to... Holding him responsible for McCaffrey's injury? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's hard, it's hard to gripe on the offensive coordinator when you lose your best weapon, but they did, and they fired him. Jalen Hurts will start Week 15 against Washington, according to Eagles head coach Nick Sirianni. Anything else you guys want to discuss? Nope. I think that's all the news. All right. Uh, a reminder, our news and notes segment brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. You can download the Sleeper app and join the Breaking Alerts channel, and you get that news super fast. Super fast. Before we get to our waivers, we want to thank today's sponsors. Specifically, First Leaf, I love to explore new wines, but I'm not always sure what to get. You know, I, I'm not the sure. wine expert myself, and I don't want to be disappointed. I just want to have great wines, and that's why I love First Leaf Wine Club. They remove the guesswork. They do all the hard work. Their winemakers sample 10,000 wines a year across five continents and 12 countries, and they select only the best bottles for the club, but they make it personal. They give you a custom wine print. It's like it's like your uh, your fingerprint for wine. And each member, it maps you out. You have a five-minute quiz on your taste preferences. And then when you get the wines, the more you rate, the more they know what you like, what you don't like. And each shipment is more personalized to your taste. There's no contracts, no cancellation fees. You could delay a month. It's very nice. Celebrate your special firsts and the moments that count with First Leaf, the wine club designed to help you discover new wines that you will love, personalized to your taste and delivered to your door. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 plus free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers for six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five with free shipping. Here's a toast to first. May you enjoy them with the people you love from the first sip to the last. Tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, we want to thank Head and Shoulders. They're taking care of your follicles. They're taking care of your scalp. My follicles need to be taken care of. Because Head and Shoulders Scalp Shield technology is what, Jason? Never. No. Not. Working. working it's giving you up to 100 percent dandruff protection even between washes i think we could do that better next time yeah uh but we've had the never not working segment uh all year all year long i'm very excited for for this thursdays what are we what are we working on i'm not gonna tell you you have to never. tune in on thursday <laughs> mm. i think we yeah. can do it worse next time <laughs> like head and head and shoulder scalp shield it works day and night to protect you against flakes a regular use of head and shoulder scalp shield technology provides a continuous invisible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, dryness, renewing your protection with every single wash. And you can get up to 100% dandruff protection. That's never, never not working with head and shoulder <laughs> scalp shield technology. We nailed that one. Available at walmart.com. Put me in, coach. That one was pretty good. Yeah, yeah we got there. We nailed it. Welcome back, Browns, Packers, Titans, Panthers. See you later, Colts, Dolphins, Patriots, Eagles. Congrats on the week 14 bye. One week before the fantasy playoffs. Congratulations to everybody who has made their fantasy playoffs, clinched it, who aren't sweating it out. And um, if you are, I hope you don't have any Colts, Dolphins, Patriots, and Eagles. This is a ridiculously late bye week. I mean... I don't like when there's week 13 buys. Mm -hmm. The fact that there's 14 this year, that's insanity. And I feel so bad for these teams. Like, they needed a break before now. Uh, yeah. I. It's incredible. The Patriots have taken over the AFC. Now they get to take a week off. Get ready for their playoff push. I want to see it. Like, if my Cardinals can't get to the Super Bowl and win win it all mm -hmm. i really want to see tampa and new england now if if i mean your, that's if just, your cardinals do get there would you want to see the patriots on the other side sure yeah me too i mean i i think i'd rather <laughs> see them than as than silly the, as it is than the chiefs but yeah. maybe not i mean bill in a big game 
With a Brady title on the other side hanging over him from last year. They've lost a lot of Super Bowls, too. That's true. Yeah, they've been to so many. Yeah, you get to uh, lose a lot. When oh, here again? It got, it was some from boredom. They were actually there from – they lost them from just – eh. All right, wide receiver, waiver wire pickups. Would you drop all three – before we get into them, would you – you know, you got to make room. So, would you drop all the Broncos wide receivers? Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. It, the, the names. The names are so difficult. I would the, drop them. The, the, the quality, the bankability, the projectability of these wide receivers are worthless. They're droppable. But when you say out loud that I'm going to drop Jerry Judy, young stud who's shown flashes, who should be a great fantasy asset, it's so difficult to do. But if you take the names out of it, I mean, we talked about dropping Cortland Sutton weeks ago. That's been good. Yeah, I'm fine with that one. I th I think you move on from this passing game, man. It's it's Detroit. Oh, yeah, I'm with. I I would be willing to if one I mean, of these names like really stood out. To if you. if if Jerry Judy was on waivers going against Detroit, we'd be talking about him on this show. Is there we'd any, say pick him up? Probably, is there anything yeah. to be said about? Because I know Judy came in with a lot of fanfare, but it's only four times in his career over two years that he's been side the, inside the top 24. So he's been a wide receiver two, four times. Is is there anything to be said about a mismatch of expectation and talent and then reality? Possibly. Um, I, I think, though, a lot of it is quarterback play. I mean, the wide receiver core, say whatever you want about the fantasy, I, I think that Cortland Sutton, Jerry, Judy, what we've seen from Tim Patrick and Noah Fant are are that, like I would want that for my franchise. I, I think that those are a talented group. I think it's quarterback play that just hasn't been. I think the Broncos have, with their actions, told us they also think it's quarterback play. Like you don't signing you, them you don't you don't re-sign Tim Patrick and Cortland Sutton to those contracts if you are if you think that they are the problem. Would you drop Rashad Bateman? Uh, man, Lamar has been brutal. Uh, so the past three weeks, Rashad Bateman has been actively bad for, for your fantasy football roster. I would be – yeah, I'd be willing to drop him. Yeah, I would. Antonio Brown? Yeah, I think Antonio Brown is someone where – you ha you have to know that I'm picking him up for championship week and that's it, and you right. got to hold him a long time. In general, I would say most teams can't do that, so you should move on. And he's he's suspended, so most league platforms you can't put him in the IR. Where like if he was just out, then it was yeah, you would absolutely you stash him as an IR player. But if he's taking up an active bench spot, I don't think I'd hold him right now. Who are your main waiver wire pickups for this week at wide receiver? <sighs> So I think we already talked about Russell Gage a lot. He, the waiver wire is it naturally over the course of the season just gets harder and harder and harder uh, to identify a player who's actually getting volume and can help your team. So Russell Gage is one of those players. the The next most obvious one to me would be KJ Osborne from uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Adam Thielen has the high ankle sprain. He's Thursday night. So at if nothing else, Adam Thielen is missing this Thursday, if not multiple weeks. And KJ Osborne was the one who got the bump. Like he went from a a part time player playing about fifty percent of the snaps all the way up to ninety two percent of the snaps, seventeen percent of the targets. Kirk Cousins is playing perfectly acceptable for for fantasy football, and KJ Osborne will be the biggest benefactor. Uh, at, at least at the wide receiver position for the Vikings, and I think you could pick him up and play him. The player that I'm interested in is one that you can't pick up and play this week because he's on by, but Devontae Parker yes. came back yeah, yeah, from yeah. injury. He's available in you know a third of the leagues out there, has a great playoff schedule run, uh, was played 71% of the snaps, left the game healthy going into the bye week. So he is a more talented player that I think is you know uh, he's available in, in certain areas. Jamison Crowder interest with the fact that Corey Davis is formally out for the rest of the year, went four for 62 last week. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I am interested in Jamison Crowder. With Corey Davis out of the way, Zach Wilson throwing more. Andy, you've brought up the fact that the Jets throw to the wide receiver position, um, you know, at a, at a very high rate. Gets the Saints this week. Yeah. Who have turned into a dumpster fire of a defense. 
Yeah, they really have. They've, they're bad. The Chargers, if they're without Keenan Allen, you're going to be without a player that has been targeted between, what, 10 and 15 times a game. So that's a lot of opportunity that could go Jalen Guyton's way. Could it, also go to the tight ends. It could. So, Joshua Palmer. Uh, like Guys like the, you know Guyton, that would be a one-week type of a thing because because Keenan is correct. Uh, like he was four for ninety last week with a touchdown. He'll be back. Uh, or Keenan Allen will will be if he does miss this week, that will suck. But he will be back the following week. Would you rather go with the rental of of Guyton or uh or Osborne or Crowder uh for for this one week situation? I think I'd rather play Osborne than okay. Guyton in that queue. Um, the Crowder one, I'll probably go with the upside of Herbert and Guyton than I will Jamison Crowder. Okay. But, you know, if you need to spend nothing of your fab mm -hmm. and replace Keenan Allen on your team or ensure against him missing, then I think Guyton is just an easy way to do that. But, yeah, I think I'd play Osborne over Guyton. Sure. Uh, another, I, I do – I just want to emphasize, Devontae Parker, I think, is – if your team is cool right now and you're just – Chilling, looking for some more depth for your bench. Devontae Parker is the is the play, but another player who he he always he shows up from time to time on the waiver wire show. Uh, but want to highlight it again: Marquez Valdez Scantling. The past two two games they played because they were just on the bye week, nine targets and ten targets. I mean, that's a twenty plus percent target share in in those two games where. He started out seeing volume at the beginning of the year, got hurt for multiple weeks. I mean, he missed, what, five games, comes back and slowly acclimating into the offense. He is the player that was getting the most reports out of training camp of, like, they think that MVS actually took the next step. So down the stretch run here, I think it is possible that MVS – is not just the – gets two to three targets a week. If he hits on the big shot, you're good. Like, I think he'll get those shots, but he might get some more uh, – Inter Intermediate more, more More sustained target volume as well to go on top of that, which would make him a very playable wide receiver three. Yeah, and I think we got to throw out the Saints wide receivers as well with uh, Deontay Harris uh, sure. being suspended for three games. The Jets um, this week – Traquan Smith, you know, he's running a lot of routes. He had seven targets. He didn't do anything uh, last week against Dallas, but Dallas's defense is very good. The Jets' defense is not good. So, uh, you know, Traquan is in the or, – or Mark West Callaway, take your pick. <laughs> I want to talk about running backs now at the waiver decision. Okay. Uh, with waiver decisions. So, I, I have a team. Lost Henry, lost Alvin Cook, lost – Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson to the bye this week. Lost your mind. Lost my mind. Um, you know, what do I do, Mike? How do I find somebody to start this week straight off the waiver wire? Because the Chase Edmonds, Chuba Hubbard uh, category of player is not going to be there. Right. I need a, I need a rando. If you need a rando that you're going to pick up and play this week, yeah, help prioritize uh, these for me. I mean, I mean for a friend of mine. Sure. Yes. Uh, tell your friend. Like, man. Uh, I mean, I would. I want to say Jamichael Hasty, but you will have no idea. The you'd be calling your shot very, very early. Could on, be Jeff on that Jeff Wilson who uh, has the repair flare situation in his knee, and he might be in. Elijah Mitchell might be in. So. So I don't maybe I don't go there. I man, can I, I the Eagles you, are on by. Okay, Jason. Yeah, I'm struggling over here for the guy. Deonta Foreman. Deonta Foreman has looked good. He has he's, 19, he's rostered in too many leagues. <laughs> okay, well I mean he's available in more than half. So sure. maybe not for you, but for the listeners. Gets Jacksonville. I mean, yes, you can interest me in him. I'm yeah. just saying I won't be able to get him. Against Jacksonville. Well then well, well, if this I is asked for Mike to solve my problem, <laughs> okay, on the show, it's Jermichael Hasty. That's the answer. How is that the answer? Because if he is, if I sign Jermichael Hasty tomorrow, there's a 
he had zero opportunities last week. Zero. He may have taken a couple snaps, but like Mike said, you have two layers that you got to get yes. through for Jermichael Tasty. Mike, I want to pivot back to you. Jason is not helpful. Okay. Okay. Uh, give, I'm, I'm up. I'm give up. me somebody that is not <laughs> rostered okay. in almost any league that is a potential start this week. Because my number one on that list, where I'm leaning right now, is the Adrian Peterson, Rashad Penny category. Okay. Because they're very low rostered. You saw last week they got it done by establishing the run. So that's where I'm leaning. Like That's where my sure. number one start is. If you're desperate, but I, I don't know if you have a better answer. The If you are looking for the most available player, it would be Amir Abdullah, who's available in about 90% of leagues. Not in ours, because he's on my roster. So that's why I didn't mention him. Because yeah. I know I'm solving your friend's problem. It's my friend. Uh, sorry, uh, Jason, if you thought I was talking about me, it was actually my friend, Randy. But, uh, but Amir Abdullah, uh, he's on the Carolina Panthers, if you haven't been paying attention. Looks like he has some juice. He will be the... You'd play him over AP or Rashad Penny? Uh, he's taking on the Atlanta Falcons and the Seahawks. Oh, the Seahawks are playing the Texans? Ugh. So the problem here... That's, that's why I like that, The too. problem with the Seahawks is I have no idea who it is because uh, Adrian Peterson walked right off the street into 11 carries. He got a touchdown... But he still looked like the Adrian Peterson who was on the Tennessee Titans. Ah, right. So that's, now that Peterson looked like the Peterson that was on the Washington football team. No, oh, okay. no, he looked like Peterson who had not been on a professional football team this entire season. Rashad Penny, meanwhile, looked okay, and he actually saw ten carries in this game. He, he led. In, I thought he looked all right as he well. He looked all right. He he led the Seattle running backs with forty percent of the snaps. Alex Collins is will allegedly be back for the Seattle Seahawks, Ugh. and that creates a massive problem. Where I I don't know who to pick between Penny and Peterson. And if you put Collins back into the mix, I think you have to bail out and go with with a yes. I, yes if I, that's the case, I would play Amir Abdullah over all the Seattle players. I think in the Seattle game, the running back to pick and, and it very well could be Adrian Peterson they bring him in another week the Texans are a, an okay matchup but ironically the better running matchup in that game is on the other side of the ball the Seahawks oh. have been very very bad and sexy Rex oh it's too sexy Rex Burkhead <laughs> um he, look he's going to get the ball 10 times I mean they no matter what if they're down uh, if they're up they're going to get they're going to get him the ball. He only had 9 last week, Jason. Well, last week was not in the Seattle Seahawks. And I think that this week they will be able to I mean, you know, last week the Indianapolis Colts what was a 24 nothing shutout just completely jumped all over them. The Colts are very difficult to run on. The Seahawks are the exact opposite. So the opportunities will be there for Rex Burkhead. Um, you know, David Johnson gone. He'll be back this week. Will he be back yes. this week? Yes. <laughs> it's a bad week for running this, this back. Is, look, it really is. Look, just been... take your loss and move on. <laughs> yeah, is... David Johnson. Oh, I, no. I was literally going to say David Johnson no. might be the answer to the question. Oh, no. Could be. So, so look, let's go Travis Homer. If you're in the playoffs and you haven't had my injury luck, you probably don't need to answer this question. Oh, good for you. There's an argument to be made that Peterson is kind of the most secure if, if Collins is coming back. In the sense that they they brought him in, they instantly brought him up, they gave him the goal line carries. You almost had two touchdowns in that game, so it's like, do you want two two or three chances at a touchdown, yes. or do you want shared carries between the twenties between Homer and Dallas and Collins and Penny? No, this the, Adrian Peterson is is the best option because all of these guys are going to suck. Everybody we just named is not going to go and get you 25 points. So the player that's going to do the best is the one that falls in, over in the end zone. I think Rex Burkhead is in that list, but it's Adrian Peterson. And for the listeners, again, Deonta Foreman is someone that should be looked at. He is yes. available in most... A uh, little over half. Yeah, a little over half. Uh, you know, I, I think he has juice left. He's looked good for Tennessee. And the last time we saw him, 19 carries. I would say... I've been debating the Rex Burkhead situation, and it's a much better matchup for Rex, but Tevin Coleman from the Jets, 
I think he's more guaranteed to see 10 plus opportunities. Uh, the matchup against the Saints, that's not what you like on the ground. They're a very strong rushing, rushing defense. Uh, so I would go Coleman over Burkhead. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. And then uh, I, Dontrell Hilliard is there from the Titans. Do we have any Jeremy McNichols updates? Because uh, if Jeremy if Jeremy McNichols is back at practice, you have you can't have confidence that Dontrell Hilliard will continue that full time role that he was playing. There is there are ten flies in the ointment of oh, every man. one of these players. This is a mess. So that's the landscape. <laughs> yeah, and that's why my first answer was possibly Jermichael Hasty because if the flies like. Best case Possible scenario, Jeff Wilson too. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff Wilson or Jermichael Hasty. But you know, if things go right for any one of these players, you know, if okay, Alex Collins is gone and uh, w sure. whatever, the, there isn't a ceiling for most of these guys. But I do think that if there is basically one running back by themselves in San Francisco, there is a ceiling. <sighs> I'm gonna have to make a decision. That's gonna be. I mean, my friend's gonna have to make a decision. It's gonna be tough. Uh, tight end waivers, Tyler Conklin's at the tippy top of my list. Absolutely. I am borderline flex Conklin this week with, like, if you're looking at Osborne and Conklin, I guess I go Osborne, but it's not a big gap for me. You know, with no Adam Thielen on Thursday, nine targets last week, seven for 56, probably a higher touchdown chance for Conklin than KJ Osborne. Yeah. For sure. So, uh, you know, targeted on 18.6% of routes. Okay. Conk, okay. conk. Conk, conk this week and conk, conk, I let, think probably next week. I don't think Adam Thielen is back, but he, he could be. Let me just break. <laughs> let me break fantasy for you. It's a, what, did you not hear that running back segment? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it worse. No, please oh, don't. Don't do this. And this yeah. will relate directly to my friend as well. Um, do you have the stones? To do what you should do. Oh, I know what the question is. You want me to want me to guess? The question is, do you play Tyler Conklin over Kyle Pitts? That may be the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes, I do. I do. Only <laughs> Oh, the process. The ceiling is still probably <laughs> oh, with Pitts because man. if either one of them can get 100 <laughs> yards and a touchdown, it's Pitts. But the probable outcome is that Tyler Conklin gets more receptions, probably more yards, and has just as good a chance of getting a touchdown. Wow. That is really I found bad. myself trying to pull Pitts out of a lineup this week and the uh, when I was trying to click the button. I was doing the uh, my pen is blue thing. I mm -hmm. couldn't. I couldn't the get the heart. There. The heart got in the way. I can't. You sometimes you can't not see the big game. And if he hadn't teased us with a couple of monster games, mm -hmm. it's like how do you leave a monster game on your bench? Because two weeks ago we wanted Conklin in your lineup, and he scored. He had a one catch. Yeah, it's different. I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna admit here on the show live. I'm playing Kyle Pitts instead okay. of Tyler Conklin. I will live to regret it. But I don't have I don't have the stones. It's it's not just it's it's not just matchups this time with Conklin though. It's the opportunity has gone way up. Yeah. So pebbles over there. But also, um, um, Ricky Seals Jones for Washington does need to be mentioned. While we're we're happy for Logan Thomas that it sounds like he didn't suffer the catastrophic injury. The tight end position is used uh, by Washington and Taylor Heineke. He was uh, Logan Thomas, very necessary. Ricky Seals Jones was also extra necessary when Logan Thomas was out, and he was, for the most part, a fine plug and play. So he's widely available if the tight end position is is uh, broken for you. Yeah, Ricky he Seals is, Jones is there. He's expected to be back this week. I uh, that's all the information we have right now. Um, but yeah, he's he's a a very good pickup. Defensive pickups, the Chargers are at the top of my list with the Giants this week. The Giants could be down to Jake Fromm. Oh, man. And if they're not, they're down to Mike Glennon. So it's great. For, up, and, excuse me. They're up to Mike Glennon from Jake Fromm. Oh, I thought you meant up. Oh, Like no. to that level. Uh, height. -wise. Yes. Um, I like the Chargers scored 20 fantasy points last week in our league. You know, they, they, they're they a good defense. Mm -hmm. They have 
Kansas City, you avoid that one. But then they have Houston, Denver. So the rest of season, the Chargers are a viable defense for your team. The Saints get the Jets this week, so turnovers could be something that Zach Wilson provides. Uh, you have the Broncos against Detroit that's, coming off their first win. Yeah, that's one I really like. Their defense has really stepped up. They slowed down Kansas City. I don't think Jared Goff's going to get it done against Denver. And it's it's going to be impossible for Chicago to score in Green Bay. It, it just is. It might be Justin Fields in the rib. It might not. It's going to be a huge issue. Uh, Cowboys defense is a great defense. Washington's not putting up points. They're just grinding wins. That's another great potential start. So there are a lot of good options this week. Seahawks up in or at Houston. Another option with Davis Mills at quarterback. Yeah, didn't Washington win two weeks in a row with like the same weird low score i do not know you well, can check that out well, yeah uh, 17 to 15 back to back weeks they won the game 17 to 15 impressive uh and also this is a great defensive week uh that you could get a, a defense rental for probably pretty cheap the titans are playing the jacksonville jaguars so i mean that's a that's a very long list the panthers against atlanta i mean yeah. it, Good defense. There's, yeah, there's uh, don't spend up on defense this week. Full stream ahead. All right, we have streamers this week, but we don't. <laughs> um, well, we've got one great streamer. Mike. So, so Taysom Hill is expected to play, huh? Yes, he is expected to play. I believe he's dealing with their calling it mallet finger. Yeah, that, uh, but it it is doesn't not sound comfortable. No, uh, but it is not as severe as what happened to Russell Wilson. I mean, he did finish the game, Taysom Hill, uh, and follow the news because you don't you could get to the end of the week and they say, well, it's not good enough. Trevor Simeon's going to end up starting, and but if Taysom Hill plays, he runs the ball so much. He five career starts. He's averaging over sixty rushing yards and ten rushing attempts per game. If you watched the Thursday night matchup, there were many times where it was that was the play. I think you saw it three or four times in a row. Mm -hmm. It was I am Taysom Hill is the offense. He's the running back. He's the quarterback. He is everything, and that is the true cheat code. The matchup with the Jets is, should not scare anybody. So Taysom Hill may still be on your waiver wire. He needs to be a priority pickup because if he is healthy enough to go and finish out the season. Like Taysom Hill should be a, a regular top 10 tight end with upside each and every week. Yeah, uh, Taysom Hill is a good reason for my streaming quarterback this week. Taysom Hill threw four interceptions and was terrible and was great for fantasy because he ran the ball for 100 yards. Cam Newton is my... Yeah. That's scary. It is scary. I really wanted to hit the panic alarm and not the player drop. For, it is, it is absolutely scary. I mean, whenever you have... You don't want to play a player off of single-digit awful performance i mean he was terrible last he week and i think benched. every uh, yeah i think i think every most fantasy managers will bench him but this is a very difficult week for streamers and when i'm looking at the lay of the land they fired their offensive coordinator they're going to game plan for cam Newton. he's not gonna have five rushing yards this week the atlanta falcons stink they're the 31st best team against fantasy quarterbacks and here's the thing they suck, especially against rushing quarterbacks. Jalen Hurts had 62 yards. Daniel Jones had 39. Taylor Heineke had 43. Darnold had 66. Lawrence had 39. Like So P.J. Walker could do something here. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Uh, Look, I don't, I, I, I'm obligated to give you a streamer. And I like, I like it, man. And uh, so Big Ben against Minnesota. Minnesota's given up top. Well, they gave up a couple of huge weeks. In recent history, the cornerbacks are beat up. Jared Goff put up a number seven overall finish. They've given up the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks. So, you know, and Big Ben looked not the worst this past week. Is in fact, he's been a very top, kind. He's been a top ten quarterback twice in the last three weeks. Oh, has he? Yeah, and oh, he's done it. Three or four. He's done it on forty four pass attempts and forty one pass attempts and thirty one pass attempts. So, I did see a, a news. Uh, blurb this morning that Patrick Peterson is returning from IR, but he is not a reason to be concerned. They they struggled uh, with him and without him, and so Big Ben is a just in case. Sure. 
So there you go. Uh, we want to thank <laughs> Traeger Grills for supporting the show because grilling season never ends. Just had some uh, barbecue on Saturday. It was a delight. And uh, I tried a little bit of a different um, Oh yeah, burger, frozen burger process on the Traeger. Oh, you went straight straight from the freezer onto the Traeger? So what you do with the uh, straight to the freezer is okay. you, you throw them on smoke for at 225 for about 25 minutes. Okay. Pull them off, pump it up to 400, throw them on for 10 minutes. Oh. They were, and, it, and it worked? I mean, you ate one of them. You I tell did. me if it worked. I had no idea. It was, How did it taste? It tasted delicious. All right. It was very, very good. I feel like I was tricked. Yeah, I mean, I try, I tried something out with the with the frozen, but um, you can keep the wood fired flavor coming all year with your Traeger grill. Make it a wood fired winter with Traeger. Go to traeger.com slash footballers and make sure you check out pristineauction.com, the best sports memorabilia site out there. A signed Deontay Johnson jersey. It is available right now. The auction is ending tonight. And it's sitting at at the time of this recording, just thirty six dollars. A Stefan Diggs signed jersey ends tonight, sitting at just twenty six dollars. Incredible gifts. Uh, oh yeah, pr prices that it's that time. It, it is the time of year, and like when you give someone a signed jersey, they're gonna think you paid out the nose for hundreds and hundred five hundred bucks, and just let them think that. Yeah, and just take all the credit. But pristineauction.com. Uh, if you're new to the site, use the registration code BALLERS because you will get a $10 credit to your first uh, auction victory. We'll have news and notes, buy, sell, Thursday night preview, mailbag, and a lot more on tomorrow's episode. Make sure you tune in. You can even watch it on YouTube.com slash TheFantasyFootballers. That oh, is it. That is it, Mike. We made it through. Good luck on the waivers, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.